Hello and welcome to this Norboard, my cabinet guide video on how to assemble a 1000mm base unit from the IT range and if necessary turn it into a sink unit. It's always best to assemble your unit on the cardboard box, that way you can protect the panels. Ok, taking the panels out, I have a base panel, two top rails, Centre mounting, a shelf, two side panels, a drawer rail. You don't need this if you're turning it into a sink unit. And the last panel is a back panel. You also have a leg pack and all the fittings required to assemble your unit. In each box there is an assembly guide. Please take the time to read this as there is a useful information on here that will help you to build your unit. It also tells you what items are in the box and the minimum tools required to get the job done. Your fittings consist of nine metal dowels, nine cams, 11 8mm wooden dowels, five shelf supports, four hinges, four hinge plates. You then have six 40mm screws, 31 15mm screws, two 30mm and two 25mm screws. Also included at four angle brackets and four cover plates. I lay my two end panels out right and left, making sure that the back of the unit is together. This gives me the right and left hand end panel. So the first thing I need to do is insert my metal dowels. The metal dowel has a red sleeve. There are two reasons for this. The first is when you're turning it with a screwdriver, you can hold on to it to make sure that it goes squarely into your panel. And the second is that it means that when you insert your other panel into it, it means that it's a lot tighter joint. The metal cam has two arrows. There is a direction arrow, and this arrow here should always line up with the hole that's in the panel you're putting it in. The way the cam and the dowel work together is when you actually put your panels together, it's like this, and what you do, you turn the cam and it locks the two panels together. So you turn the cam and it all pulls it nice and tight together. And they go into the 5mm holes in four points on your unit. You can use a cordless screwdriver to put the fittings in on your unit, but we would recommend a handheld screwdriver because that way, when you're putting the fittings in, you can make sure you don't over tighten them. I'm going to fit my wooden dowels. You don't need a wooden dowel in the centre of the top of your end panel. I'm going to put one in here, tap until the sound changes, and working my way along. Put three in along the bottom. Okay, so that's my end panels prepared. I'm now going to get my base and inserting the cams into the hole that corresponds with the hole in the edge. There is a, an arrow on the cam that you need to point to the raw chipboard side and then there is a directional arrow that tells you to how to tighten it up. So I put four of these in, and the last one, like so. Moving those to one side for a moment. I'm now going to fit my base panel, groove to groove, 
tightening the cam as I go. I'm going to take one of my rails, this is going to be my front rail, making sure that the coffee bean print is towards the inside of the unit. Again, tighten it up. If you're making your 1000mm base unit into a sink unit, you don't need to put the fittings in here, you need to put them in here. I'm going to do that right now, put my wooden dowel in, one on either side, put the metal dowel in, like so. There are two holes here on both panels. These are not used because this panel, as I said earlier on, is exactly a mirror image. So I now put my back rail into position. And in doing that, you've moved your back rail from here down behind the back panel, giving you approximately 200 millimeters where your pipes can run up your service space nice and neat into your sink. So taking your tape measure, you measure from the surface of your base panel to the top edge of your end panel, and that's approximately 465 millimetres, and that is the height you need to cut your back panel off. Okay, so we had a measurement of 465 millimetres, so 465 there, and again here, and then taking my level, a line across and that is where and all of this is waste. I'm now going to cut that off and fit it into my unit. I'm going to cut my back panel off I've cut my back off, I've moved my rail to make this into a sink unit I now fit my last side panel. The reason you move your back rail to this position is because most sinks come within 50 millimeters of the back of the unit and it also retains the rigidity of the unit. So locking my cams up. I'm now going to turn this round so I can fit my center munting. And you fit that with the 8 mil and the 5 mil hole towards the top of the unit on the inside. Screw, 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 screw. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is turn my unit onto its base, slide in my cut back panel, breaking down the edging tape like this. And the last thing to do is just to fix your back panel to your back rail. Rule of thumb, put a mark here. Do the same on this side. And go to the centre of the unit. And then drill your holes. And then using three of your 15 mil screws, fix your back panel into position. I've made this thousand base unit into a sink unit. If your kitchen design shows it and you need to adapt a five, six or 800 base unit into a sink unit, just follow the same steps.